Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 288 of Be With Me. And we are being with the prodigal son today from Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk about exotic women and anonymity and money and then, of course, repentance, which he's a great example of. We threw him under the bus yesterday, the prodigal son. This is verse 11 from Luke chapter 15. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had, took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. Madness. Desperate case. Wasteful. Past recovery. Verse 14. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose uh, in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? So first point is the distance. He goes on a journey. That's number one. Number two, he goes to a different country. Then number three, it's a far country. So he's hoping a couple things. I think he's hoping for distance. And in that distance, you get anonymity. Are we, of course, we're always before the eyes of the Lords and probably trying to get away from accountability that nobody is watching. The second thing I think he's getting for is he's trying to get, uh, because we learned yesterday that this was uh, reckless living, a past recovery, desperate, mad case of being devoured, eaten up by what? Prostitutes, sexual stupidity. And I think part of his uh, efforts here were for exotic foreign women. And uh, we, you, you may see that in uh, the life of Solomon. So I wanted to turn to 1 Kings chapter 11, and I'm just going to kind of buzz through Solomon's fall. Uh, the problem is in, in verse 1, it says, King Solomon loved many foreign women. And then there's, he marries them, and then it turns away his heart, and then he clings to this. He, he has this bad idea where the Lord had proscribed this and uh, Solomon thought, well, I'll get around this. So he gets this death grip on a loser and he won't let go and he clings to this. And in fact, he doesn't even cling to it. He actually goes after Ashereth, the goddess of the Sidoans, and he starts to do evil in the sight of the Lord, and he doesn't wholly follow the Lord. And then finally, uh, in the great offense, uh, builds a high place for Shemash, the abomination of Moab. So it's just he just kind of goes from from bad to worse, and it's it, it hinges on exotic women as opposed to the principle in Proverbs chapter five, uh, which says, verse 15, drink water from your own cistern. He's talking about sexual satisfaction in from home. Drink water from your own cistern, flowing water from your own well. Should your springs be scattered abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be for yourself alone, not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breasts fill you with, at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. So we should talk about breasts for a second. Um, I don't think we've talked about that in 288 uh, episodes. But the proverb uh, is to let her breast, the wife of your youth, be satisfied with those two breasts rather than more breasts, uh, as opposed to always the ones that you don't have. And I, I think this might be the, the problem that the prodigal is. He's outside the boundaries of marriage, outside the Lord's provision for this, and kind of goes like a crazy man. That's what it says. It says he's madness. He, he's madness. 
He's past recovery in this reckless living with the with the prostitutes. So that's strike one. Strike two is let's talk about money. And he has this generational wealth. He might have earned some of it, uh, invested in the farm or whatever business that the father was in by uh, working. But he gets this inheritance uh, and spends it all, spends everything and sort of dissociates the blessings of the satisfaction of worth, gets this windfall and then spends it all with this zipper management uh, problem. So then something bad happens. After he spends everything, uh, a severe famine arises and he begins to be in need. And this is where the story turns kind of cool. Um, in this world, certainly we're going to have trouble. There's going to be famines and oppressions and dropsy and illness. And that's just in the past couple of chapters. And he finds himself in this fallen world and he begins to be in need. And He's not a citizen of this country. In fact, it says this, that he goes and he hires himself out to one of the citizens of that country, sort of emphasizing the, the fact that he is not a citizen of this. He's outside his family bonds. He's outside his bonds of association geographically with his neighbors. He's outside of his work associations. The servants are even held up here in a second. He's outside his tribe and he's outside his country. So he has to go and hire himself, which is a great thing. So he hires himself, he feels the need, and uh, he feels hunger. And I think this longing is the beginnings of his restoration. So when he's with the pigs, he doesn't eat their pods. He just feels the hunger. He doesn't take it. He's tempted, probably. That's why we know that he feels longing and hunger. Certainly he was, was uh, tempted, but he doesn't take it. And this is where the story becomes great. So who of us has not been sexually uh, stupid? And we find himself finally here. He stops taking what is not his to take. So it's, the story starts with sex and then it goes into food and he stops taking what isn't his. And that's where the story becomes great. And that's where be this knucklehead becomes smarter than Solomon. So he doesn't take the man's food. He works for the food. He doesn't steal it from the pigs. And then he's going to come to himself. So it's a great story of this prodigal knucklehead who becomes smarter than Solomon.